Hello and welcome to Nathan's Garage. I'm Nathan Kershaw and this is the show where we make questionable decisions with limited skills and just live with the consequences. If you'd like to support the channel in any way, head down to the description and you can see all the links to everything you will need, including all this merch and also the PayPal pool kind of tip jar if you just want to help the channel along a little bit. So what are we going to go with today? We're going to go low stakes with an RS500 style intercooler for the XR40i and I think I've thought of a name for the XR4. I think it's a guy. Usually all my cars are girls but this I think it's a guy you know and I think there's no other better name than Steve. This is Steve. From now on, this is Steve. Steve's pretty cool. Steve puts up with a lot of my crap and a lot of stuff I do to him. So, say hello to Steve. Let's have a look at the intercooler. So the reason why this looks a little old and scabby is because it is. It is, however, new in box. It wasn't in a box, it's new under dust. So it's an eBay special RS500 copy intercooler that has at least a 65 to 70% chance of fitting, which means it's not gonna fit. We'll have to figure that out. But um, this is kind of a replica of what they used in the old touring car days with RS500s in the 80s and the glory days of the Ford Sierra British touring cars, world touring cars, Japanese touring cars, Australian touring cars, all the touring car race series. Now. I'm rocking about, I want to say, 97 three-legged stallions at the rear wheel. So I really don't need this, but I'm prepping for the future and the world-dominating power that this car is going to produce. I don't know how, but one day it will. Maybe. I like that for some super pro um, ducting for the radiator. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem now, but it was cool at the time. Look at that, that is some expert rust proofing there as well. It's just how I roll people. Okay, so me thinks I'm gonna be cutting out that verticals, well, well both those verticals, and <laughs> I think the horns are gonna be going as well, and possibly my flasher lights. We're about to see. As always, my 10 minute job seems to be turning into a 10 hour job. Some people say I'm unrealistic with my time management schedules. I have no idea what they're talking about. So everything's out now. I guess we can offer in the Rus 500 intercooler. As they say, a five minute job is a quick bad decision away from being a five hour or even a five day job. And bad decisions, it's my forte. So, more stuff's coming off than I thought. Now, the biggest issue we're having right now is that wiring loom right there is kind of taking up, it's on that side as well, it's taking up altogether about an inch of width that I need. So we need to relocate, not remove, relocate okay it has been a little bit worrying why for the longest time this thing has been absolutely caked in oil the air cleaner and it's getting more worrying by the second you can see this the intake pipe here is full of oil i don't know if you guys can see it but it is i don't think the um Airbox has been out in a while. This should be good for one of those fancy cleaning montages, right?
little bit different. You know when you can sense that something is about to careen out of control, like a politician in a strip club? This could be one of those moments. Everything's, if I'm gonna do that, why don't I just do that? This part of the day is going spectacularly well. Absolutely spectacularly well. Lovely and clean. She cleaned all that down there as well. Now, obviously I've got cleaning in my head now, so I just want to take everything off and clean it. So OCD is kicking in well. But I'm thinking, so I'll remove the header, the header tank, because I'm just going to change the cold side of the turbo. I can't actually feel the turbo spinning. It may not be, or it may be really stiff. That's that. Take the header tank off, probably clean more. Then I'm like, I'm basically, I'm following these wires because I'm pretty sure it comes from that, goes along there and goes this way. And I think they terminate around there. So I'm like, well, if I'm taking the battery out, why don't I relocate the battery? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I apologize if sound is bad. It's hot. Wife testing is inside, not wanting to be hot. Right, so we had just a little bit of a loom that ran this way. That's out. There's the fan switch and another thing that's right there. And I don't know what that's for. I don't think it was connected. And then this one here, this whole loom is the one that ran across the front up there and then to start a solar mode and all that kind of stuff so what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to put the intercooler in and with nothing in see how it fits so what i want to do now while they're kind of just loosely mocked up i want to obviously get the wiring out of the way uh get the rotated intake on get the new cold side of the turbo on there is a company called Max Speeding Rods, which I'm quite sure a lot of you have seen who are all over the internet right now, uh, sponsoring small channels. They got in touch with me and they do turbos, they've got catch cans, all that kind of stuff. Coolant tanks, which um, I may take off them. Um, but for now, John Barr uh, sold me a turbo months ago with um, like a forward facing elbow welded on here. So we're gonna put that cold side on now Okay, first real mock-up. We've lost the inner light mounts, so they're gone. Um, so that's in, and the radiator's in. Everything's loose, they're super tight. Now, <clears throat> it seems whatever combo oh, you have kind of dictates how you're gonna mount it. So the intercooler for me is in the AC condenser holes and the obviously radiator, I've clearanced it a lot. With not much finesse is in the normal radiator mounting holes. Now, those eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that the intercooler was over to that side and that's why. So it's not quite wide enough to go into the condenser holes. Um, so I'm just doing that temporarily for now to hold it in place. As you can see, super tight then we can figure out what angle we need this to be at because this has got to come up i think i don't think i'm going to be able to clock this in the right position to be able to use this and it's super close to the top of the radiator as well so i think this is going to be getting chopped angled and then i'll be going to my local aluminum welder because i don't have an ac tig yet it's on the list okay 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 so it's kind of where we are one thing with having the internal wastegate is I have to line the mounting holes on the cold side up. So this is best case scenario, but probably not how it's gonna be. The actual air intake, I know there's like a, a plate that you can clock that on the cold side with. That could just like come up and straight. And that would pretty much take care of the intercooler when i got this car all those millennia ago it has had water in it uh, in the cooling system for all the time it had been sat so it was a complete mess inside so there is welding on the water jacket in the head that i've done and that right there is jb weld so if you have the same questions as me as in as soon as you walk into the garage 
what can I JB weld today? An intake manifold is one of those things because that has been in for two and a, two and a half years, two years. Uh, although it's top side, you know, it's not got, I assume the highest amount of current going past it. Um, it's stayed there and it did have a lot of Permatex on it to, uh, to seal it all up, but it worked and it didn't leak. Okay, not a bad day was had. It's horrendously windy and the AC's on. Which Volvo Yoda and Keith just fixed new motor. It's quieter than it was before, so hopefully the house is nice and cool. It's so back to the car. We have John Barr's cold side on, oriented as he had it, I'm pretty sure, because this is his piping as well, which is awesome. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna lower the radiator down probably half an inch and just see how the setup works without modifying the angle of that intake. And then also John Barr's 90 intake, which has been measured to within an inch of its life and is perfect. So that's great. So now I just have to order up some probably 90, 90, I am thinking. And Volvo Yoda did say he had a bunch of stuff at his house, so we may be able to trip up there tomorrow. I don't think it's not a bad day. Not a bad day at all. And of course, I couldn't resist at least throwing the bumper on, and then I thought, well, if the bumper's on, why not put the grill on as well? So there we go. It's beastly.